What's going on, smart people? It is that time of the year again. This has become a bit of a tradition at this point. Every semester, at the beginning, I sit down and make a video where I create my Google Calendar, where I put everything that I have going on for the semester onto it. And I like to think that this is a bit of a win-win because maybe you're someone who's considering grad school for physics and you'd like a bit of a sneak peek into possibly what your life will look like, or you just like to see another example. And for me, it's a reason to finally sit down and put everything in one place so I can stop forgetting to go to things, which is always nice. So uh, I'm doing this through Google Calendar. If you want to make one for yourself, you just go over to these nine icons, you click on it, and you make a calendar. Okay, so my whole schedule is pretty front heavy. My Mondays are very, very busy. Let's just get right on into it. Luckily, I don't have anything on Fridays. Bit of a spoiler, but you know, there you go. The first thing uh, doesn't actually start until 10.30, which is pretty good. And the first thing, it's none other than the most notorious physics class for graduate physics students. You probably already know what I'm talking about. It's the one that everyone loves to bitch about, which is e and &M. E and M. The reason people like to complain about it is because it's usually taught through the textbook written by Jackson, which is notoriously difficult to read, but the reason we still use it is because it's incredibly comprehensive. Everything's kind of in there, though a lot of stuff is, you know, left as an exercise, of course. So this goes from 10.30 to 11.45. This one, it's going to be, so far it's an okay class. I mean, I'm not particularly interested in e &M when nothing's really moving yet. I think electrostatics is kind of boring, but it's still an incredibly important course, so whatever. That icon's gonna be yellow, uh, and it repeats. I have it Monday and Wednesday. <clears throat> uh, I don't know when it ends, so let's just say never. e &M is with you until you die. Okay, so save that, and that should be recurring. Awesome, I think yellow's an appropriate color. The next one, so e &M doesn't require any prerequisites, uh, you just take it, really. <laughs> but the next class that starts at 12 does. So this one is high energy physics. And high energy physics requires two courses of graduate level quantum mechanics. So high energy. I'm not going to write, everything's a physics class at this point, so that would be kind of redundant. Um, more options. So it doesn't, wait, I, that's not the right time. So it's not to, I think it's till 1.15. 115, and that does repeat uh, Monday, Wednesday, and you also never end. Cool. Glad we've established that. High energy. I'm digging the hell out of this course so far. Let me make sure that that's where it ends. I do have um, the week at a glance where it has your course schedule screenshotted on my phone, but the reason I'm still doing this is because everything else isn't on week at a, at a glance, so it's just nice to have everything in one spot. So yeah, that does end at 1.15. This is a really cool class so far. We just had our first homework due, which took me a pretty long time to complete, but it's graduate level physics, what do you expect? But the homework was like, what processes are possible or not possible as far as like scattering and making new particles or decaying into different particles. And for that kind of stuff, it's, it's heavy use of uh, Einstein's ener energy relation. So just like the square of the form momentum uh, is the invariant mass squared. And just using that kind of thing to, to say what particles can you make. Another thing is in this class, <coughs> sorry that my voice is kind of dead. In this class, we use natural units, which is where C and H bar are equal to one and not one of a particular unit. It's dimensionless in natural units. So something that's been helpful to practice was when you do a calculation in natural units, how do you go back? It's easy in, in regular systems of units where there's still, you know, it may not be the same unit of mass, but it's still comparing masses and the scaling factor. But how do you convert from something that's dimensionless to something that has dimensions? Uh, it's not necessarily hard, it's just different, but it's been cool to practice that as well. <clears throat> so that's that. The next class isn't until three o'clock. So at three o'clock, I'm gonna take a sip of water so I don't sound like Jordan Peterson over here. Um, this one is my nuclear physics lab, so nuclear lab. This one I can't speak on too much yet. We haven't done any labs. We've just done a lot of uh, like error analysis stuff and making sure everyone knows how everyone's on the same page with the statistics. And today we did like a safety thing for radiation. And then in the next lab, we'll actually start doing stuff, which will be cool. So today's Wednesday, as you can see with the little blue guy here. So that won't be until next week. So that's from 3 until 
I have no idea if it'll take this the whole amount of time. I assume that it will because these labs, our professor said, you're not doing it in a day. You're not doing it in two days. It'll probably take a couple weeks for each lab, which uh, a little intimidating. It's going to be a hell of a lab report for sure. So that's the nuclear lab. It does repeat Monday, Wednesday. And these are actually all of the courses that I'm doing. All of my classes are Monday, Wednesday. So we're almost done, actually. So nuclear lab, what color is a nuclear? Um, so we've used yellow, we've used blue. Peacock! Why can't things just be blue anymore? Uh, nuclear is definitely purple, right? For sure. And is there anything else I'm missing there? I don't believe so. Nice. Okay, so that goes there. The next thing is, um, so those are the three courses that I'm taking, E&M, High Energy, and Nuclear Lab. On top of taking courses, grad students have to uh, work for the school in some manifestation. That'll either happen through you being a TA or maybe being an RA or a little combination of both. TA means teaching assistant, RA is research assistant. I'm the little bit of both. So from six to seven on Mondays, I have to tutor which is clearly red. Okay, and this is this repeat, repeats every week. Okay, uh, Tuesdays, what do I have on Tuesdays? Now I actually have to think about stuff. I, I don't tutor, I do have to teach lab. See, this is why, don't make me try to remember stuff, have something on a Google Calendar with pretty colors. 1.30, so it starts at 1.30, and I think it ends at 4.30. We'll just put that in for now. So this is, uh, I don't know, TA? Well, that's a bit ambiguous. Let's do teach lab, why not? So the lab that I'm teaching this semester is, uh, <laughs> what's it called? It's, it's like heat, sound, and optics, or heat waves and optics, something like that. You get the idea. It's a lot of wave stuff. Um, so far, the first lab was like, how does uncertainty propagate? The second one was actually wave motion. I think it's heat, light, and sound. I think that's what it's called. It's kind of embarrassing that I can't remember. So this one, uh, this isn't as bad. This is just orange. The only reason the tutoring is red and the other one is not because it's tutoring, but just because it's at six to seven. Ugh. So this repeats every week, weekly on Tuesday. And that's actually, I believe, the only thing going on on uh, <clears throat> one thirty to 4.30. They're, they don't have three hours. It's probably until 4. Okay. So, yeah, um, I think that's the only thing that I have on Tuesdays. The only thing to bitch about is that it's, like, a little bit just in the... It's at an inconvenient time. It's, like, in the middle of the day. So, you either have to wake up early to get stuff done or... I don't like starting, stopping, and then starting again, so I'll either try to be super productive here or super productive here. We'll see how it goes. Uh, Wednesday, I also have to tutor, and that is from 2 to 3, so that's going to be tutor. And I guess we'll do, for the sake of consistency, we'll make it red. Okay, so yeah, it's like as soon as tutoring is done, I'm going to run to the nuclear physics lab. Uh, and then there's only one more thing of the week, which is, um, so I said that I'm part TA, I'm part RA, so we also have our research meetings. It's not in stone yet when our research meetings are, but I just spitballed a date, and I'm just going to put that in there as a template. Tuesdays at 12 is when I said. Okay. So Tuesdays at 12. So that's also then. So I'll say group meeting. And this is more or less where we, we talk about the direction my project is going. So right now, we're just, um, I'm, I'm interested in taking matrix elements of the energy momentum tensor in quantum field theory. It's just for a simple model. We were doing a, a well, I guess I shouldn't talk about the specific Lagrangian, but, you know, it's, it's, not, it's not actually QCD. Like, it's not a gauge theory. So it's a bit simpler, and if things go well, we'll probably do the gauge theory version of it. So... Um, this is, let's see, what color should the group meeting, that should be green. Basil, dude, why can't you just call things green? Are you kidding me? I don't know why that annoys me so much. So that's, uh, let's keep it not repeating for now, I'll change it if things change, probably from 12 to 1. 
And then the final thing is um, on Thursdays. So on Thursdays at 2.45 is my TA meeting. See, a lot of the time as a TA is spent <laughs> not really doing classes. It's, it's just, actually a lot of it is doing classes, but a lot of it is spread like doing TA stuff, TA meeting. But I mean, your funding has to come from somewhere. So that's, uh, it starts at, why did I say 1.30? Where did I say it's 2? What's going on here? Who are you? Uh, did I put that somewhere? I don't think so. So let's try that one more time. So it's at 2.45. That's TA meeting. And I mean, that's more or less self-explanatory, right? It's just where we go over the lab for the next week so that I'm not blindsided when I get there. Um, the, the, the first one, I still was a little bit because I didn't know how to use the uh, Vernier caliper, I think is what it's called. It's a measuring device that lets you get like an extra decimal place when measuring lengths as opposed to using like a meter stick. So that took me a little bit. I was like, how the hell is this thing? What do I read? What am I reading? Okay, weekly on Thursday. It said uh, 2.45 to... I'll call it 3.30. Normally it doesn't go to 4. Let's let's give it a full hour though. It's, probably, it's normally at least an hour. 3.45. Okay. And a TA meeting. I guess we'll have it coincide. Why was one orange and one... Oh, one was lab. So let's let's do that orange, just to because it has to do with lab. I'm not a visual. <laughs> I don't know why I'm spending so much time on the colors because I'm not a particularly visual person, or a color coordinated person. As long as I have everything there, that does the exact same thing. So I don't know. Maybe it's less stressful for you to look at though. But I think, so far as I can think of right now, I mean, there's other stuff too, like when you have to get actually work on homework and, and things like that when I make these videos but you know that's more of an afterthought and that's less uh, that's more dynamic because not all the weeks are the same and you can't always work on things at the same time so I'm not gonna try to force that but yeah this is this is more or less my schedule uh, can I say more or less one more time this is what my schedules looking like um, I like that my Fridays are pretty free so that means I got a three-day weekend my Thursdays are pretty free except for having to be here you know, at a, at a at the middle. I'd rather it be in the morning, but it is what it is. Um, yeah, I guess it's not too bad. I, it could be a lot worse. The, for me, what would make this a lot worse is if everything was completely spread out. Like, Monday sucks, don't get me wrong, that I have the three classes and I have to tutor from six to seven, but I'd rather it be like this than have some of it also be on Friday, for me, anyways. Uh, just to make some last minute comments about doing this and the YouTube stuff. Um, last semester, I juggled them both and I, I made sure to get everything done. And I think that had a bit of a negative impact on my health and my sanity for that matter. So this time around, I'm going to, if, if I have to kill myself to get a video out, I'm just gonna post it another day and I won't think twice about it. I think that that's gonna help the longevity of this channel and it'll keep me from burning out. And uh, I mean, if it's the same videos to shift it a little bit, I don't think that that's a big deal. And I think it emphasizes that my priorities here are school. I'm not in school to be a YouTuber. I'm in school to become a professional physics researcher, to become a theoretical physicist. And I love being able to share my perspective and my a bit of a story through these videos. But the goal isn't to share the stories. The goal is to have stories to tell. You know what I mean? So uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope this shed some light on what the second year of grad school. I don't even think I mentioned that. I'm a terrible... Yeah, that goes to show I'm not a YouTuber. I don't even say what this is for. But this is my second year of grad school for physics. This is what the schedule's looking like. Do you think this looks like a lot? Do you, uh, do you think like with factoring homework and the, the YouTube stuff that this looks like a lot? Or do you think it's completely manageable? Let me know in the comments section. How does it compare to yours? And I'll see you guys there.